Well, the floor is yours. Is it going to be about design-centered and design-driven innovation approaches? Hello, everybody. Am I fine to stand up? I am. Yes. Yeah. Yes, um, please. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining us for this session. Um, my name is Michael Leitner, as you see up there. Uh, I'm working for Create 21st Century. We are a design agency based in Vienna. Uh, we do um, digital e-learning, of course. Uh, this is why we're here at this conference. We produce e-learning content ranging, ranging from interactive videos to web-based trainings. We produce uh, video formats, we produce podcasts, audio formats, and so on. And we, provi we provide e-learning technologies to our clients, mostly located in Germany, Austria, uh, so in the central um, parts of Europe, basically. We've got a booth. If you want to know more about our company, please join us, uh, have a look at our products. Uh, of course, but this talk is not about our products. It's more about our research that we are doing, and we are doing our research together with uh, collaborators from universities. In this case, we brought uh, our collaborator from Technical University in Vienna, Özge Subasi, with us, and we are going to introduce you to some projects that we did, um, which are somehow related in the academic area, but are mostly related to research uh, aspects of our work. So, as I said, we are producing e-learning content a lot, so there is coding work involved, there's a lot of software involved, but the approaches that we are going to talk to you about are basically taking place before the first line of code is ever written. So, what we are interested in, in our mutual work, in our mutual research, is the design phase that is at the very front end. So, when ideas emerge, ideas about what the next e-learning service and product could be. And we are interested in looking in, looking at and researching into um, formats, methods or approaches that allow us to co-create with clients and most importantly with users and learners, those people who are then at the end of the design process are going to use the products that we are designing. And we are interested in formats that allow us to positively engage and work with clients and with users of technology. And the three projects that we are going to present to you are sort of experimental projects where we tried out different ways of interacting and getting in touch with those users that we want to work for and we want to work with. So these are just our logos that you have them in mind. So the title of our talk is Creating Together, Design-Centered Innovation Approaches for New E-Learning Products and Services. Um, I let it as it is. Oh. The first project that I'm going to present to you is uh, an approach that is called probes, probing. Um, it has a history about, of about 15 years in the design research community and probing is all about working with users, asking them to do, um, asking them to answer questions actually, but not in a sort of questionnaire-like style, but rather by giving your future users a sort of creative package with open, sometimes even vague questions, asking users to respond to these questions. So, sorry, to these questions. And what we try to get from that is that they open in a way that we didn't expect them to answer. And we take this insight and input it into the design process that we are carrying on with. This is one example. This is a creative package that we developed with and for the city of Vienna as part of their smart city project. And the aim of the Smart City Department was to understand how people feel about everyday city life. And they could have gone there and designed some questionnaires, sent this out, do an online questionnaire and so on. But they wanted to have a bit more em empathy in that process, so they asked us to come up with a sort of approach that helps us, helps them, 
to get in touch with citizens, people who live in Vienna, allowing them to report of how they feel about city life. So this is a package that is given to a person. The person is working with this package for two weeks, responds to questions um, like, how do you feel about your everyday mobility by drawing a map, not just by answering in words. Um, and as you see, the format is slightly different to a questionnaire. It's paper-based, but it's something that is given to users, to citizens. And we aim to create a bit of more value in handing something over, giving something to the users. Uh, the interesting thing is we work with 20 people. Um, unlike questionnaires, unlike with questionnaires, we had a very high respondence rate, so every person responded to this. Um, there was no person dropping out of this study. Um, and we believe, and we don't have any proof, but we believe this is because this kind of approach allows us to be a bit more direct, a bit more um, empathetic. Is that the right word? I think so. With our users. Um, I'll give you a second example. And this is something we used also in an e-learning context. What you see here is a fabric questionnaire, basically. Um, the circles on this fabric represent places. And we gave this to respondents saying, we want you to respond on your everyday or think about your everyday mobility. Which routes, which journeys are you taking every day? And we could have asked them to just tell us what they do. I take the tram, I take the bus, I take the metro. But we asked them to sew their paths, their everyday journeys onto this fabric. And in this way, creating their little map of their own mobility. Um, and of course, for some people, it was a hassle. They didn't want to do it, so they started to draw. Some people did the sewing. And then we interviewed the people of how they felt about this approach. And of course, some were fine with it, um, some liked it very much, but th the interesting thing about this was that it isn't a quick task that you do, it requires you to think about it, and you sit down and you do the sewing, and in this way you get into the task of responding deeper in a way. So this is what we try to, um, to do, to basically to summarize these two probes packages. We aim to use a different type of material to interact with the users and to get feedback. The other positive thing about that format is, unlike with questionnaires, that is something you can give to designers directly. And we have done that. We have given that to, uh, I think, overall 12 designers, asking them to work with this. And this comes with interview uh, snippets and excerpts from the interviews that we did with the, uh, with the people uh, participating in this study. And designers could work with that. So they have something to touch, touch, something to grab, something to look at. And we felt that's really a good way of, of producing a sort of, not ethnographic data, but user data that is really suitable to work with in a design process. And we did a small study with that. Uh, on e-learning, for instance, we ask people to draw um, their everyday journey, indicating um, places and times when people thought they were actually learning. So there was a learning task involved. And with that study, we actually found that people are not as mobilely learning as they thought. Actually, people were learning in the same places um, over and over again. For instance, sitting at the desk at work. So we've tried out these approaches in an e-learning context and we think somehow they can work, although they are a bit uh, explorative in some way. Um, but basically we want to discuss with you later on whether you think this is applicable in a business context as well. Um, but before we do that, I hand my microphone over to Oeske, who is going to introduce you and me and us to two more projects. Thank you. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, as just um, sitting in the university, I, um, I have the duties of um, 
of um, dealing with methods from different perspectives. So it's similar to what Michael is doing, but just like applying it into different contexts. So I brought in two more projects, uh, additional to um, probes, to showcase um, how it would work, um, how, how this would work in this context. And Peddler Suitcase is the first example, um, and it is here for representing an artistic work. Um, I work quite a lot with artists. I have an um, art school background, actually, uh, and this all in technology context. So one thing um, we had this year was like um, putting an artistic piece together, working with artists, 20, 23 artists, on a particular context and look into what happens uh, during this process. And the uh, aim of this artistic piece was just uh, creating a participatory environment for uh, creating new product ideas for, um, for more of dark futures. For instance, in this case, the dark future of Turkey. Um, and all the artists in this, in this exhibition were uh, also part of the Gizi movements in 2013. Um, and I brought this piece here just to discuss a um, couple of issues in relation to learning. The, the project was not in learning context, but uh, from an academic perspective, um, I observed quite a lot of potentials of such, um, such artistic work, and we, we discussed quite a lot how it would fit into business context and learning context, actually. So what we have seen is like, sitting together with artists like two months long and then um, getting into artistic ideas has also value on the background ideas. So I've learned quite a lot about the background, the idealism and all these processes that makes an art piece in this case. And we thought um, this can well be used in, in, in um, curriculum or schools or universities uh, context as well with students. Um, actually, uh, we are working on, on some proposals on that, how we can do that and how we can scale that for schools. But this was one project that we wanted to bring to discuss. Um, one idea is about co-ownership, like how the students can co-own the future curriculum and future perspectives in, in teaching and education. And also, like, using this bottom-up perspectives was very important for us. Um, I just, I think we are running out of time, so I go for the... Yes, yeah, so who is co collaborating? Since probably if it's an art project, then you would need to involve artists. Or if it's a science project, probably scientists or somebody from in the industry mm -hmm. or... This was like uh, an art initiative with 23 artists and like a lot more in um, contributing like free in free will. But our idea is just to bring the artists into school context so that schools and public groups uh, can collaborate with artists to develop their curriculum. This is more the idea just for future. Um, just a more structured project that we are running is the give and take project where we have living laboratories with um, older citizens and municipalities. And we again um, use quite a lot of creative methods like um, stages and role playing and things like that. Um, especially, I think we have maybe some people from Denmark, so if you want, you can also go and visit one of the living labs in, in, in Copenhagen. It's still running until end of April. And what we do here is just like uh, letting people play with the ideas just, um, just without the construct of being, having hierarchies or, or power relationships on, on play. And we also, again, um, thought it can be interesting in learning context because we have just um, seen and observed quite a lot that um, this communication with public domain is not easy and this type of approach can help. Um, the, the same uh, applies for transparency issues. Um, and also I would say that the engagement uh, through this fun and all through the artistic effort behind uh, could be important for this. Just to wrap up, we have one last slide with all, with all three um, projects. Um, so we would like to hear from more from you as well. 
um, about how it would work, how it wouldn't. Yeah. Okay, thank you.